Hello. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another live stream. And of course, it's Tuesday. That, of course, means we are looking at Elite. Dangerous today. Now, we're not actually going to be playing Elite because, um, as hopefully a lot of you have seen, that the purpose of this week is to do some theory crafting on builds. And um, that means that I have collected us come in a few suggestions to build that we're going to have a look at. Um, and if you have any suggestions during the live stream, um, you should be able to find my email. Let me just verify that I actually put my email in the description of the live stream somewhere. Yes, at the bottom of the description, you'll see in the, you'll see my email. So you can send the suggestion to me if you want me to have a look at it. And if you're lucky, I'll manage to swoop that in there at the end. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Imaner. It's been a while. The first one we're actually going to look at. Let me just quickly get up the email here on my other screen, if I can find it. Please tell me I didn't close that. No, I didn't. Here we go. So the first one we're looking at has actually uh, been sent in by uh, by Scorgrim, which we can see is here in chat. So, um, And this is one... The reason why I don't start with this one is because this has actually been... I've been thinking about this one for quite uh, quite a while ever since he sent in the mail. The idea was, he sent in several ideas, but the one that I really like was building a a frozen or a cold um, PVE ship. So basically, building a PVE ship that would be able to permanently running uh, with silent running active. Now, this idea is interesting because. When you're running in silent run, I mean, it's not a cloak. You're not invisible, but your detection rates go down quite far. And I think if you're in a large ship, your detection rate is something like 800 meters, um, which is quite far when it comes to combat. So I think a medium ship, you go down to like 400, I think. And then in a small ship, you go down to 200 meters. So if we could build a, a small ship with very good heat efficiency that could still dish out some damage, and that could have a permanently running silent running, or it could permanently uh, have silent running active. That thing would be almost impossible to hit because you would need to be within 200 meters of it. And if it's a small ship, it's going to be fairly uh, nimble, fairly maneuverable. So you're going to have a very hard time hitting that thing. Um, so that's kind of the premise of uh, of the idea. I'm not sure if it should be have silent running active at all times. Or just be very, very cold at all times. Um, I haven't really decided on that yet. But um, that is where I want to start. And I'm pretty sure there's no better ship for this than going with a Diamondback Explorer. Oh, hold on. Oh, chat is... Uh, oh, whoa, here we go. Chat goes stuck for me. Um, okay, so let's have a look at... I want to start out with a Diamondback Explorer. I think this is a pretty good place to start. Um... And of course, the most important stat is going to be our resting heat, which is behind the camera. So I'm just going to move myself down here so you can see. Um, here we have the resting heat. That one, I mean, when the ship is not doing anything, when we're not boosting, we're not firing our weapons, we're just sitting still. This is our heat. I should say that I'm running on the beta build. So this is the stuff as it will be after the patch, if there's any changes. So I'm probably going to start by stripping this ship down. Um, and of course we want an A-rated power plant. There's no doubt about that because that efficiency, that is how much um, energy we are draining, how much heat we're generating. Um, could be done in the Cobra Mark Three. Yeah, but the heat characteristics of the Diamondback is just so good, and I like that one large weapons. What well, large weapon? What does the Cobra? Mark three half for weapon loadout. So it's medium, medium, small, small. But uh, it's too high on resting heat, I think. Um, I think I'll try to do it in the Diamondback Explorer. Then we'll see. Maybe we'll do more builds with it even uh, even later on. Um, but let's just get this stripped down again. And let's put an A-rated power plant on it. We want A-rated thrusters. Because it is combat. And we are going to run without shields. So we are going to use our maneuverability to make um, to mitigate damage. So we definitely want some, some decent thrusters. Let's throw in a frameshift drive. We might downgrade this later if it turns out we're running into power problems. Um, you can see here we still have plenty of power. 
but I want to keep the power low because we can always go and go. Um, we can either go armored. It's very it's very likely we'll go armored because we can see armor armored actually lowers our heat efficiency. And since we're running without shields, armored would actually be a really good idea. I always thought I wanted to go um, that I wanted to go low powered, but I might actually want to go armored instead. And the reason why is you can see here armored gives us better efficiency. Um, more integrity, so if we get shot at, um, our power plant is not going to die. Um, and we're going to get more power out of it. Only like 12%, but that's still a bit. So I think I'm actually going to go armored and then thermal spread to get us down to 32.2, which is really, really good. And we can see already now we should begin to see some better uh, heat coming here. So life support. We're going to derate that, and that's just going to be lightweight. And power distributor. Let's get a big power distributor. Let's go. Let's just start with go to pretty standard um, charge enhanced and super conduit to get as much recharge as we can. And sensors. Well, we can pretty much control the range of the engagement. So I think that I want to put derated sensors on this. And I want to lightweight that as well. Boom, there we go. So already our jump range is pretty decent. And we're going to get that heat level hopefully even further down. But 29 is actually already pretty good. Um, yeah, so here we have... We're still only at 43% heat. That's very good. I mean, okay, to be fair, we haven't fitted any weapons. Um, or utility mounts, but this is actually quite interesting because if we start by having the mentality that is um, that we are gonna go for um, no or go, going silent running constantly, um, yeah, mines could be fun, but if I'm gonna try to build it as a PVE ship. And you don't want to use mines in PvE because they are an area of effect weapon. And if you hit someone it for PvP, sure, it could be fun. I'm not sure if cold builds, how well they work for PvP. But um, but for PvE, which is what I'm going to try to build at least to start with, um, you really don't want to use mines because, because they're an AoE weapon. You're going to hit the wrong ship and then you're going to get a bounty. Um, so I would really want to recommend not using mines for this at least. But what I would do is probably to the with a large weapon. So the whole the whole trick here is we want to keep our power down and we want to have as little heat efficiency as possible. Now when it comes to heat efficiency, there's nothing that beats a multi-cannon. Um so I would probably go multi-cannon. And we could go effective, but it will reduce our thermal load a bit. But you can see here the multi-cannon if we uh, if we take it off, I mean 29.81 and then multi cannon on it's basically not any it, it it generates so little heat that this efficient on the multi cannon is just a little stupid to be honest not efficient but but it the uh, doing it efficient for the thermal load is a little stupid what we could do it for is to save the power or oh, sorry yeah save the the power from it pretty much take off half the power that's going to be able to keep our power down. We'll see about that later because that might mean we can actually change the armored out for... Uh, but we want the hit points on the power plant. So we can we can play... We have, the, we have plenty of power to play around with. Okay. For the mediums, I have a rather interesting idea. And it might seem weird at first, but I want to go with beam lasers. I want to go with two beam lasers here. Um, oh, resting heat, of course. Aha, resting heat. We, of course, not... This is not when we're shooting. Where do we have heat? Do it have, does it have a heat profile? FSD profile. Damage profile. Uh, exactly, but I have a I have an idea. That's, a, that's a offensive. They don't show... Oh, here we go. Thermal. No, that's not damage. They don't show... Hull hardness. Daniel, thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Okay, let's uh, let's head back to the beam lasers. They don't really show the um, the active heat 
But um, here's my idea. The beam lasers are going to get efficient. So we reduce the heat generated from them. And then we're going to put thermal vent on them. On both of them. So efficient and thermal vent. Now, if you've seen my cucumber build, you will know how efficient this is. This is going to completely freeze the ship. This is going to be our... Um, this is basically going to be our um, our heat sinks. When you hit with these lasers, they will chill your ship and they will chill you to the bone. So these two lasers will serve two purposes for us. They will deal some thermal damage, which we're going to need to take down shields. And we can see here down on our damage profile that actually the majority of our damage right now is thermal. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's good. And... Uh, and it's also going to help us cool down our ship. And with the multi-cannon, I was considering either going overcharged. I know it increased the thermal load, but again, the thermal load is... Where can we see? Heat per second. So this one generates 2.3 heats per second. And this one generates... So an efficient... An efficient medium beam laser generates about the same heat as a large non-engineered multi-cannon. Two small beam thermal vents. No, two medium beam thermal vents is what we add right now. So either we'd go efficient to get that thermal load down and get the power draw down as well. Um, or... Alternatively, we go with overcharged, which is going to give us a little bit of a thermal in the other direction, but it's going to give us a ton of more damage. Um, could you take a look at my trading type 9 and see if you could optimize it? Um, or is it good to go ahead? Uh, send it to my email. The email is in the, in the description, right at the bottom of the description. Send it to me and I might have a look at it later in the live stream. Um, oh, I don't know what I want to do here. I kind of want to go overcharged on it to get more damage because we are going to be... I mean, we're not going to have that much damage to play around with. And then I probably want to go... Oh, but the problem with overcharge is we are going to reduce... Hold on. We're reducing our ammo capacity by by 15%. But there is no, what do I mean, small hard points. There is no small hard points on the Diamondback Explorer. There's only mediums and large. Uh, I don't know. I want to go overcharge. I probably want to go efficient, to be honest. Just to prevent that 15%. Just to prevent that 15% um, loss to ammo cap. Because I want to go corrosive shield on this, which is going to give us minus 20%. So if we had also the 15, that would put us down to like 20, 35% on ammo. And that's a little bit harsh, I think. So that's why I probably want to go with efficient and it's all going to play nicely into the build. Um, it is going to cost us a bit of damage output. So this, I think, is pretty damn... I mean, now we can see this is generate 0.9 heat. Sustained heat per second, 0.7. It, it's basically not generating. Um, um, Fleming, you can you can send a suggestion to my email. I can't promise you I'll get it in, but you send in uh, suggestions and I'll take a look at the at them later in the live stream. Um, okay, so so I think this is what I would do for weapon loadout. Now, since we're gonna go for how are, we, how are we doing for power? <laughs> we have all the power in the world. We could probably downgrade the power plant, to be honest. We'll do that later. Let's see where we end up. Now, since we're going to be running silently all the time, there's no reason to put any shields on. That means that our utility mount is going to be interesting. Shield boosters are useless. A heat sink or two might be good. Um... A chaff launcher might be a good idea as well. Um, oh yeah, we might want a kill wave scanner, kill wound scanner. 
Kill one scanner because more credits. Chaff launcher because, well, defense. And then two heat sinks because, well, silent running. And the chaff launcher is gonna be engineered for ammo capacity. And so are the heat sinks. Come on. And the kill one scanner is gonna be fast scan. Fast scan kill one scanners are amazing. Exactly. Um, yeah, that silent running drops your shield instantly. So there's no reason for us to put in shield boosters here. And same here, but we do probably want some armor. Um, yeah, no shields. That's why we have so much power. You can see how much power we have when we deploy. It doesn't matter. We can put, we can use that, I mean, the kill bone scanner uses a ton of power. I can't remember how much it is. Uh, I can probably see it down here. Yeah, see, look at the kill bone scanner. It's using almost as much as our thrusters on the ship. I mean, this one uses more power than all our weapons combined <clears throat> alone. <clears throat> and and fast scan, but we can do that. Normally, I would never put an A-rated kill bone scanner on a small ship because it just takes up so much power. But we can do that because we have the surplus power to, uh, to play around with from the Arbor armor plant. And jump range is still pretty good. Look at that. I mean, 30, 30 odd light years, that's pretty good. Um, okay, now we're going to have a look f at the internals. Um... We most likely just want to have some armor here. We have four, three, three, two, two. Okay. So, uh, okay. There's a search function now. I love this. So we can go with a 4D hull reinforcement pack. And this is going to go. Uh... Oh, where's the hull? Where is the hull? Here we go. Armor. Oh yeah, of course. We want... Uh, what do we want? Military grade. Mirrored. Which would give the most balanced... So this one just gives you more armor. Then you have the mirrored, which drops your kinetic to like, ouch, you don't want to do that. An explosive, you give a lot of thermal. I probably would go with something like this, even though we do take a huge hit to our thermal resistance on the armor, but we might be able to work on that if we go I'm not sure that the that, uh, NPCs can target you with you're still running cold. I don't believe they do. So we get plus plus fifteen percent of the whole reinforcements compared to Ooh. But we also gain here, we also get a significant increase in our thermals. You know what? Let's put um, let's put another hull reinforcement in here. And I watched want a few guardian, like just one guardian, I think maybe. No, you know what? I've got to put. Uh, Guardial module reinforcement pack in there, and then we're gonna go. We're just gonna have one guardian module reinforcement pack, and uh, for the rest, I'm just gonna go uh, D rated hull. Uh, 
And the reason why I want to have so many hull platings is because of the resistance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure NPCs can't can't target uh, slow ship or uh, cold ships because otherwise, why would people fire heatsink and silent running into station? Cold running have uh, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, when you run into the station, you're basically running in. You're running in cold to a station to try and hide. Um, you're doing that because you don't want to get targeted. I'm pretty sure it does work on NPCs. Uh, okay, we need... Okay, so here's a good trick. When it comes to hull reinforcement packs, we want to try to balance our resistance a little bit. We're going to work on that thermal. Now, if we take this one down here, uh, uh, and we go thermal resistance increase, that is not a... So, if I remove this again, you can see here we have... Oh, go away. I said remove this engineering. Can I, can you please, is that a thing you can do? Yes, thank you. So here we can see our thermal is 1% right now. Now, if we add a thermal resistance here, you can see we get actually almost an additional 40%. It's not it's not 40% on top of the 1%. Like it's added, uh, multiplied to the 1%. It's added to. So just having that one thermal here down the low ones. And the reduce in armor is not that that big compared to if we got, went heavy duty. So you can see here just doing that, we kind of balanced our resistance. So for the rest, we're just going to go heavy duty. And heavy duty deep plating. And I'll probably also go deep plating on this one. Like so. And then for the rest of the hull reinforcements, it's basically the same story. Heavy duty deep plating. Uh, oh, didn't click the modification icon. Heavy duty deep plating. Guardian module reinforcements can't be. Heavy duty and deep plating too. Look at that. That's actually quite impressive. Look at those numbers. I mean, we have 2,700 2, armor hit points. We have almost over 4,500 in all of our uh, hit points when it comes to absolute. That's a lot of armor hit points on our Diamondback. It is a small ship. This is actually, I'm really liking this. Oh, we forgot to put uh, modification on a reactive surface armor, which we want to go heavy duty on and deep plating. Putting us up to over 5,000 hit points. 5,000 hit points on a Diamondback. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. I'm actually a little bit uh, impressed with this armor capabilities. Blimey, we have no hull, I'm sorry, no, uh, no cargo, we have no collector limits, we have no nothing. But this thing can take a beating. And remember, it can only take a beating if this works as intended. It can only take a beating within like a few hundred meters and if we were to do this as a pvp ship we'll just change out the kill wound scanner for something else um like a uh, if we do pvp we would probably i'm not very good at pvp but maybe we'll do i don't know another chaff another heat sink i really don't know but we'll then in that case i would probably take off one of the hull reinforcement packs here and change it out for an FSD um, interdictor. 
So we're in frameshift drive interdictor. Like that. Um, still plenty of power. And we can now pull people out of super crews. Um, not sure what I'm doing with the kill one scanner. Something else there. Um, So, yeah, but for now, let's just keep that. Uh, let's get that whole reinforcement pack back in there. Heavy duty and deep plating. <laughs> I'm really liking this. We still need to, um, to engineer our frameshift drive, increase range, mass manager, thrusters, dirty drive, drag drives. Oh, hold on. Do we don't want to go dirty drives? I'm not sure we actually want to go dirty drives. Hold on. Because that increased our thermal quite significantly. So what our speed is like if we go with clean drive? You can see your speed up here in the uh, oh, behind the chat. <laughs> Right now, our speed is 255 with boost is 334. Clean. Clean is actually pretty good. The drag drives. And then maybe go drive distributors to get more optimal mass, but, um, but not get the penalty to thermal load. So it's a little weird on the thrusters, but uh, still, I mean, this thing can jump. This is a pretty, pretty good jump ship. I mean, we're getting up to the 40... It's a Dimebag Explorer. We would expect it to be good at jumping, right? Um, get up to 45 light years max with fuel on board, like 42 and a half. Packing a lot of armor and a decent punch. I mean, those lasers will hurt. We are talking about the armor hardness. It is 42. And uh, Derek, these are not shield numbers. These are armor numbers. Our shield is here. Zero megajoules. <laughs> we don't have a shield. We're going to be running in silent running mode. But anyway, I think this is pretty much how I would, um, I would build a cold PVE ship. I mean, and if you guys are right that that doesn't work, I'm pretty sure it does. But if it doesn't, and you would use this for PvP instead, change that uh, 3D hull reinforcement pack out for a uh, frameshift interdictor. Change that kill one scanner out for something more useful. Maybe even keep it empty. Um, you could maybe use a wake scanner if people are high waking out. You want to hunt them. That could be a thing. I mean, you have the power to fit one, so a wake scanner might work. Manifest scanner if you want to support if you want to um if you want to check their cargo hold um point defense I really see that as a limited use because who the hell carries missiles? Um another heat sink could work, another chaff launcher maybe could work too. Um I would maybe go for the uh for the wake scanner or the or the manifest scanner. Um or their manifest scanner or wake scanner, but I'll probably go with the wake scanner to be honest. Um, but at least for now, I think that is, uh, that is that built. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to post the links for you guys so you can save them if you want them. There you go. Post it both on YouTube and on Twitch. So you can take those builds and you can play around with it if you want to. Um, this is at least is where I would probably po try to go with it. I managed to consider building this in game just to try it out in combat, see how it is. Yeah, stealth, stealthy dwarf. It is a stealthy dwarf. That's a good name for it. It's it's small. You can't see it. This it's the dwarf dwarf rogue. <laughs> okay. Um, let's move on to uh, the next one. Just see here, I got a ton of emails. 
Why is this not showing up in my inbox? Oh, there we go. Okay. And the other one I wanted to have a look one at was um, was one that was sent in. And um, oh, let me just get out of full screen mode here, uh, like so. And this is an expiration anaconda that was sent in. And uh, just gonna get that open there. Go back in. Okay. So there we go. So this is an expiration anaconda that was sent in. Um, and the question was if you wanted to use it for. Um, let me actually just find the email here so I can uh, make sure I get this right. Uh, where did that go? There. So we try to build an expiration and a content, but want to add the new mining modules and ask if it's necessary to have all the new stuff and what is the most immersive way to mine in the beta. Okay. So I replied back and asked what, um, what he was planning to be using it for. Was it going to be an expiration and a content just to like get around the bubble to get around to mining spots? Or was he actually planning to take this into deep space? But the more I thought about it, I figured it doesn't really make sense to take this out as a... I mean... Um, oh, we have actually have the, the guy who said it in the, in, uh, in the stream, it seems. So, question is, is this meant to be like exploration going out of the bubble? Because if you're going out of the bubble and you want to mine, where are you going to store? You need to sell this. Okay, so this is the expiration anaconda for 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 the uh, um, distant world two exploration uh, trip, but if you're going to mine out there, where you're gonna sell your stuff? I mean, you're gonna be carrying it around, and it's gonna hurt your jump range like hell, as you can probably see here. That's the point that I don't get. But if we were to do a, if we were to do sixty one, isn't that bad? That's true, but still. Um, there will possibly be a mining event. Okay, I don't know what they're recommending. Um, yeah, I agree, but okay. What we'll do first, we'll really quickly run over the build and see if we could do some optimizations to it. And um, and then I have another idea for a build that we might use this to build on even further. Um, so first of all, let's just quickly run down the, uh, the build here. Um, Low emission on a five, we can probably strip some. I mean, you're not going to overheat anytime soon in the Anaconda. So we can probably strip that down to get us a lighter power plant there. 5D thrusters with clean drive and thermal spread. Are you really that afraid of overheating? I mean, you have enough heat sinks. Life support. Why only great? Oh, that only goes to grade four. Power distributor, engine focused, yep, cluster capacitor, exactly. 8D light rate, 5D shields with enhanced low emission for the less power draw, I would guess. Less mass also, yeah. A, f a refinery, detailed service scanner, planetary vehicle hangar, uh, guardian fighter hangar, cargo rack. Okay, so... Yes, okay, you want to be ready for deep core mining. In that case, I think that's also my recommendation. Since we're going to go and we're going to be flying in deep space, we want our cargo to be as valuable as possible. Okay? Um, and that means that we will only be going for the new materials uh, that's in the core. Uh, so we'll only do core hunting. That means the mining lances are useless to us. Um, what we will need... Is this the new, uh, hold on, is this beta side or is this, no, it's not. Hold on, I'm just going to change the link here. 
so we get this over on the beta server like so and um, the first thing I want to do is to go and find a mining wait they haven't Okay, they don't have the new tools in beta. Okay, you will need one blaster. Hold on. Oh, that really makes me sad. Okay, you will need the blaster. Um, okay, so the lances were placeholders. Okay, this is the noise. Where are they? Mining lands. There we go. Okay, so we use this the lances as placeholders. You will need one blaster, and you will need one. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, the uh, um, seismic charge warhead launcher thing. So we'll need those two. No, you don't need two FMUs. Which you want a second AFMU, you can fit it here. Um, but let's just quickly do a rundown and see what we can do to kind of see if we can optimize this a little bit. So far, it's pretty decent. Uh, fast scan. Do remember that after this new one, there's going to be another uh, modification here for increasing the probe size. Um. Yeah, you could go with a... So I guess this one could be used... Oh, this is a restricted. It's a military slot. So we are limited to... Okay, hold on. That guardian there... I'm going to remove... I'm going to move your guardian... Oh. FSD... This is not working very well, is it? Guardian, where are they? Where the hell are they? Shields, structure reinforcements, experimental, Guardian. Oh, we had the wrong one. Here we go. Guardian frame to drive. There we go. We're going to move that up. Oh, it does not. Hold on. That doesn't work down there. Uh, uh, what can we put here? Shield cell banks, hull reinforcement, multi reinforcements, meter alloy, guardian shield reinforcement packs, and hull reinforcement. These are probably heavy, right? Oh, yeah, ouch. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Now, first of all, I wouldn't be so nervous about your heat. Um, you can go dirty drive and you can go drag drives. It doesn't matter. You're not going to, trust me, it's not going to be that bad. Frame shift drive should be pretty straightforward. Yeah. And this one is probably heavy duty deep plating. Yep. Um, the only thing I think it would change then is probably the power plant because we can do a lot down here. AFMU is off. Planetary vehicle hangers off. Uh, Thank you for picking my build idea for that stealth warfare. Enjoying <laughs> your channel. Much love from Germany, smiley face. Thank you, Scorgrim, for the uh, donation. That's absolutely awesome. Um, okay, I want to... So, when we are in travel mode, right? We're going to turn off our cargo hatch, our refinery, um, our collector limpet, our fighter hangar, and our mining lances. All that stuff is going to be turned on, off. And when we need the AFMU, we can turn that on. If we need the planetary hangar, we can turn that on. If we want to go mining, we just turn 
that stuff on and we have a bit have it available so we can turn all this off can't wait refinery yeah. all that stuff can be turned on and all we need is to have enough power to keep the afmu active um because that's going to be the most power hungry module and you can see here we still have i mean 15 percent and i think this one even was low emission low emission and, and monstrate which we don't need um i agree we need that a rated but we could probably go around to a rate we could go we can go well, um level four and look at this you're a rated before before you had an a rated with low emission which increases your mass and you have monstrate which also increases your mass. so yet before you had this this is a 13.2 ton Let me write this down. Oh, oops. There we go. So right now you have a heat efficiency of 0 0.14 and a mass of 13.2. Um, I think what I would do was be go with a grade four. Can we actually, can we, can we make this thing fly on a grade five armored power plant? Oh, damn it, that's close, though. Uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. Nope, it's not. Okay, so that will not fly unless we're going to gonna begin to sacrifice... Um, I mean, we could do something like that. Is that enough? Nope, nowhere near. Mm-hmm. Overcharged one, maybe. No, oh, we need to go quite far, quite far here. Overcharged four, and if I go thermal spread to keep that thing down, is that enough? Yes, yeah, so we could do that. Okay, so that gives us 2.5 tons and a heat efficiency. That's a lot though. Four, three. Can we get that down by going to a grade four instead? That one had barely enough power to keep us running as it was, meaning we have two options. We can go armored, which increases. This is good. Yeah, so armored. Do we want to go fully armored? No, we don't. Do we want to go... Hmm. So we have two options here, right? Either we can go with a with a small hold on. Um with a small overcharge and a thermal spread. Like so, giving us way more power than we need. And this is definitely I would say better. We got the heat down. Hmm. Does it make sense to mine lasers first? But no, not really. Well, kind of depends. That's a long story. I mean, I've already planned, let me see, one, two, three, about six videos just to cover the, the mining in the next. Uh, it's a long topic. That thing alone will probably take me an hour to explain, which is why I divided it up to six videos. Um, oh, this is actually a little difficult where we get the best and the most out of the ship. Uh, this is annoying. Maybe even if it's just a 4A unengineered power plant, what would happen if we went like armored one? And then we could probably go thermal spread. And we are still running, still flying. I think this is probably what I would do, actually. Go armored one, which seems counterintuitive. But that increases your efficiency. 
And you can always, if you want to have more efficiency, you can always go with higher armor rating. And that would increase your efficiency down to like, which is, this is plenty. And then thermal spread, right? Like 0 0.32 efficiency is pretty good. You don't need to get all the way down to 0 0.4. That's, uh, that's way overkill, I think. Hmm. Yeah, the power plant is, is is difficult because we can't go low. Can we go low emission monstrous? That works too. Does it accept low emission two monstrous? Oh, it went armor two. Hold on. Low emission two monstrous. No. Oh, that is so close. But this is actually pretty good. Oh, can we do something? I mean, we could drop a heat sink. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's what we got to do. You don't need more than two heat sinks active at the same time. You can bite all of them, but you never need all four of them active at the same time. Two should be sufficient. When those two run out, you turn them off and you turn on the two others. So, I mean, we could so I would just say just go with two heat sinks online at the time and we have enough power of course to have the afmu online that online and we can go to mining mode which would be like oh we go oh, the mining mode is more expensive or oh, is that really what's the power output ah oh, come on but again, now we we don't know. I mean, we're using the mining lances, and I'm not sure how much power the other ones are using. So, I would I would post you this build as this right now, as a recommendation for stuff you could change. But remember that we need to change out the mining lances for the other modules, and they might have a different power draw. So play around with it. Um, you don't have to go all the way down to those 0.4 you were before. Try to to play around with some of the lower grades, either low emission armored. Um, is probably the ones I would recommend you look at. Lower grade life support. Oh yeah, downgrade the life support. That's probably a good idea. D rate life support, light weighted. Remember that you can you can synthesize oxygen. So if you run out of oxygen, you can synthesize it, and you can technically keep running. And that also gave us the power we needed. So probably something along those lines. Um, I would agree that I wouldn't overcharge the power plant on the exploration ship. But we have like two grades of low emission and then monstrous. We probably don't need the monstrous anymore, do we? I would probably do. But again, you can play around with that if you want to. You could also go um, oh, one level thermal spread. Uh, sorry, low emission and then thermal spread. That might work too. Oh, 0.4. You kidding me? And then only run one heat sink. There you go. Then you have that. Anyway, I'm going to post that uh, that link. Uh, it's a difficult one. Play around with the um, uh, play around with the arm uh, with the power plant. It's, it's always difficult on exploration ships to get that. Um, so yeah, play around with that and just make sure you have enough power to run your mining setup when the new tools are being added because we don't have those here okay let's um let's move on to the next build uh i think we have a few ones incoming here hey okay we have a uh one that just came in from the chat uh which was a exploration a trading type nine um Let's have a look at that and see where we're at here. Okay. Uh, what's going on with the thrusters? Okay, so no boosting on the... Th what? According to Coriolis, the ship can't fly.
Okay, let's try to update. Mm, this says maybe it's more correct in... Uh, uh, this is the beta. Is it any different in the live version? Nope. Why are they red? Maximum mass. What's the mass of the ship? Where can we see the mass? Ah, I know why it's red. I know why this is red. Look at this. Yes, they have a maximum mass. Uh, they have a maximum mass of uh, 1,409 tons, which is okay because your whole mass with every, with the uh, with modules um is under a thousand but if you're fully laden yeah so when you when you <laughs> when you fill your cargo hold up your thrusters can't lift your ship off anymore <laughs> so that's no good that is no good Can we make them fly? No, less optimal mass. We can't. I would probably... Yeah, but the, it's a conda. And if you don't have... I mean, the problem is the cargo. He has so much cargo in here, which I means it's a trade ship. Um, But I'm pretty sure it's an it's an issue that you are. I mean, when you fill your ship up, you're gonna be. Yeah, we can try clean, but it I mean the clean doesn't do anything. You can see here where's the clean drive. It also reduces our optimal mass, as you can see here. So that's no good either. Um. And I wouldn't recommend C drives. B drives are okay, but. Get there heavy, and we want a jump range, so I would probably upgrade to six A's, um, which is gonna give us. Yeah, I would ask me. Can you have you, anyone tried in game? Can you actually lift off the cargo, the the hatch with this? I mean, if we go with six A thrusters, latent. Oh, that hurts the jump range. Ouch. <laughs> But then we can go dirty drive, drag drives on that. And let me see. We have again have the lightweight, heavy duty D plating. We have the VA armor with an overcharge and strip down. Interesting. Overcharge strip down. Is plenty of power. Can reduce the power output anywhere. D-rated sensors, D-rated life support. They are all lightweighted. 2D power distributor. Pro I think actually boost. That's actually impressive. Engine focus cluster capacitor. Yeah. So it will boost. Um, Guardian FSD. Hmm, I'm thinking here. Heat sinks. Yeah. We're just looking, right now we're just looking at a, uh, like a trait type 9, see what we can do to optimize it. What I'm thinking here is, now let's just play around here. Let's just write down some, um, let me write down some numbers here. Um, cargo, where do I have cargo? <laughs> oh, here we go. Cargo is um, 736 tons and laden jump range, which is what we got to, what, I'm, what I want to try and optimize. 
um, is where is it? Twenty nine point three two light years. Okay, let's see if we can't. Oh, I'd also go uh, shield strength. Shield strength is what is on this reinforced. Hopefully, reinforced high cap exactly. And shield strength is a hundred and forty eight megajoules. Yeah, trading it. I assume this is not. I mean. With the five T shields, I assume that this is um, this is meant for solo play or at least private groups, and the shields are just there to take small bumps and scratches from stations so that you, uh, so your ship don't explode. Um, yeah, exactly. And is that anything? At least you go in solo. That's that's what that was my assumption here. What I want to try, I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Is I'm just gonna get rid of that, that, and one cargo. What are the small? Oh, docking computer. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Um, if you want a docking computer, uh, lose th three, to eight tons of cargo. And then go with a... Can we put a four shield on it? Can it actually hold? Shield cell banks. Where did shields go? Shields... Where are normal shields? <sighs> what the hell? FSD intensive fuel hangers, limpets. We don't have a shield on, do we? No, we don't. Is it because they don't fit? They're too small? Ah, yeah, okay. So it's because that there's no shield generator. Uh, damn it. I was hoping to downgrade the shields and go with a Guardian one down here. To try and try to mitigate some of that lower shield damage, but it will not hold. Hold on, what does the Guardian FSD shield booster actually do? Oh, uh, that's a flat bonus to shield hit points. Because that's an additional, like, 100... And that's pretty much as much shield as you had before. <laughs> if we just switch at one of these in. So that's why I thought if we could downgrade it, maybe. But the problem is those shield generators, they don't have enough... Um, they don't have enough optimal mass. Damn it. So not a lot we can do there. <laughs> Reinforced high cap. And yeah, it's really a shame. It would be nice to get that larger FSD booster in there. To get a little bit more range out of the ship. Shield reinforcement packs. Change that back to a cargo rack. Oh, I uh, went 5A. I think you went 5D shields, right? 5D reinforced high cap. Wait, why is my shield so much higher now? That's because this is a shield reinforcement pack. It's not a shield. There we go. Yeah, now we're back. No, a shield is okay if it's just for taking like minor bumps and scratches. It will be enough. Um, it'll be enough to take a small hit now and then, so you don't. I mean, if you don't boost into a station, then you'll probably be good. Um, yeah. What else do you do? You don't do a lot else, do you? Can we do, could we do anything with the utility slots? 
Yeah, I'm not sure I would boost up resistance because, again, this is just meant to take bumps. And bumps, they have ab do absolute damage when you uh, ram into things. Um, they don't actually do kinetic damage as far as I understand. So there's no reason to bump up resistances because, again, this is clearly a build that is meant for solo. At least not. it's not going to be something that you're going to see... Um, you're going to be seeing flying around with an expensive cargo in open. Then shields need to be bigger. But uh, you know what? I would probably leave it where it is, to be honest. And then, uh, then just take it from there. But why the Type 9? That's a good point. If we have the power, but we don't have the power to spare, could we do anything to get the more power out of this? It's already overcharged and stripped down. It's not a lot to do, because how much power would we need? To get a guardian shield in reinforcement, guardian shield reinforcement in there. It's not that bad. Yeah, there we go. You can you can forfeit eight tons of uh, cargo. If you forfeit eight tons of cargo, you can more than double your shield hit points. Um, all you have to do is just turn off your cargo hatch. And if you ever need your cargo has to scoop something, you just turn off some of your uh, optional internal, some of your utility mounts. Then you have enough power to uh, to run again. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Where are we at? Let me just quickly have a look at my... Uh, that's not my email. That's my other thing. Mm. Let me see here. I think I stored some more here. If I write folder. We've done that. Okay, that's an interesting. The best possible trading ship. Um, and I assume... That's a good idea. Let's try to do... How would I... Okay, so you know what, what we're going to do? We're going to keep this built here. And... Whoops, that was the wrong window. And... Um, and then I'm going to build an anaconda. And we're going to try to do pretty much the same... Same thing as we did here. I'm going to try to compare it um, and see what we end up with. So, let's get this thing stripped down to the bones. Okay. Uh, you know what? I actually want to go out of full screen so I can see. Just see, just see what you did over here. So, we can try to mimic it. So, we are going to downgrade the thrusters. Did you go with the lowest possible thrusters that could fly with? You did. So, we could go with 5A thrusters here. Boom. And we're going to upgrade the frame shift drive. We're going to downgrade the life support and the sensors and the distributor. Do we want to boost? Probably do. Can we make it boost with a... We'll, we'll figure that out. Let's go with a 1D to start with and see if we can make that boost. Um, For cargo versus jump range. Yeah. So we can uh, we can do like a a a trade trade number here. I'm just thinking how we're gonna compare them. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the latent jump range and we're gonna multiply it by um, 
by the cargo and that's gonna give us the uh just gonna get my phone here that's gonna give us some kind of like point score like trait score how good of a trait ship it is it's because we wanted more of each right so our latent jump range is 29.37 we're gonna multiply that with our total cargo on this one which is okay let's go with the other one where we had cargo hatch here because that was the build that you had before just to give this as many points as possible cargo there we go and it has 736 yes giving this 21616.32 trait point um whatever those trait points are so now we're going to see what we can do here on the anaconda so how small of a shield generator can we make this thing fly with we can go down to a class six shield generator hold on a second Why is the biweaves? What's going on here? Oh, because it's class four. No, class three. We're going all, all the way down to class three shields here. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, let's um, let's get this thing filled up with cargo, that, like that. <laughs> We have restricted, so you know what? We're gonna use this for shields. Um, we can probably feel a sh can we feel a shield generator here, or is it only for? Uh, you, this, uh, the best we can fit here is a shield reinforcement pack. So I think we're gonna do that. It's heavy, but this alone gives us more shields than we have. Let's oh, let's consider what we're gonna do here later. Um. Thrusters, we're still good on our max. Oh, but we don't have a lot of room to play with here. Um, so, have a look at the shields now. I don't want to put it in this big of a shield, but I just want to see what I can actually fit. I can still go with a class 3 shield, so I'm definitely going to do that. Um, I wouldn't go with docking computers. I never fly docking computers, so I'm going to give myself those two extra tons. Uh, shield three. Yeah, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put on a 3D shield generator, which is gonna give us about as much shit as you had before. And then we could always put in that. Uh, um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Could this one put Guardian FSD? Dang it. So we have to use this one for a Guardian Frameshift Drive thingy magic. Guardian Frameshift Drive booster boom. There we go. Okay. Um, let's begin to put some engineering on this. Like so. Life support, light weighted. So now the power distributor, we're in trouble there. And lightweight there. Yeah, okay. Dog computers are nice, but we, I mean, it's four tons, and I mean, we're nowhere near where we are over here. And that's just because of those two class eight slots. They're just completely out cargoing us. Um, but we might win on the jump range here if we're lucky. But okay, we need to be a lot better when it comes to jumping here. Okay, but we still have a lot to, uh, to do here. Shields reinforced. High cap, boom. All the shields. I'm probably going to leave this empty. It's too heavy. Uh, do we want to be able to boost? I guess we do. Can we make this thing boost? If I go engine focused cluster capacitor. 
Nope. What if I go with a 1A and then go engine focused and cluster capacitor? Will it boost now? No. What if I go with a 2D and go engine focused and cluster capacitor? It's still not boosting. 2A, this is getting heavy. And cluster capacitor. God damn it. Three D engine focused cluster capacitor. What is how high do we have to go before this thing will boost? Engine focused. Cluster capacitor. There we go. We're boosting. And of course, we can go heavy duty. Deep plating here is for free. Thrusters. What have you done on your thrusters? You went dirty drive, drag drives. Or did I? I went dirty drive, drag drives. You can win something else, I think. Um. No, that was the other one. Okay, five uh, a five d thrusters or five a thrusters probably, and we're gonna go with the same build here. Dirty drive drag drives probably. Dirty drive strip down. We want to save two tons. We're not gonna win yet. I think we're too low on uh, on cargo. Okay, now we begin to play with the power plant because we have a lot to win on the power plant here. I would probably recommend going A-rated. Um, how light can we get this? So this one is five tons. And if I then go low, no, 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 they all give me more mass. So I want to go, can I keep this under five tons and make it fly? I can. Oh, hold on. Can I go 2A power plant on this? Overcharge it? Oh, this is close. If I go like that, that thing is flying. 4D power distributor is lighter, are you sure? 5 tons? 4 tons, it is. Engine focused. Cluster capacitor, and we're still boosting. Perfect. Thank you. Now we're getting somewhere. Should we just see where we are at in terms of points, how close we are? So the, the target is 21,600. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So we have a... Total cargo of 420 tons, and we're going to multiply that with our latent jump range, which is 47.92. Oh, it's so close, giving us 20,126, which is less in terms of our you send another link, I guess. No, I think links are getting eaten by uh, by YouTube if you post them in chat. Oh, but we're so close though in terms of points here. We're just just below the others built. I want to get more jump range out of this somehow. How do I get more jump range out of it? Can I, can I go 2D there and then just say, yeah, we're going to be hot, but. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, that's, that's not going to work. 2A is the best we can do. Go overcharged on it. And 
monster it is the best we can do. Hmm. That didn't work. Ah, okay. Can you send the link to me on Discord? Because this is not working for me. Uh, yeah. But again, the car, the, the, yeah, okay, that didn't work. Okay, we're going to try something else. Um, you know what I want to try? Where is the beluga liner? Where we at cargo wise? Okay, that's never gonna fly. That's nope, 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 nope. Okay, let's try the cutter as a last uh, last resort here. This is our only hope for fighting that. Uh, if we have two restricted slots, ah. Okay, so what do we do with shields? How big of a shield do we need to get this thing with a shield? It's class 6. Oh my god. That's a lot of cargo that we are wasting. And here we'll need that Guardian... Guardian FS Frameshift Drive Booster. Uh, Yeah, it's better for cargo, but can we make it jump? Can we? Question is, can we make this thing pass surpass the thirty light years jump range? Um, do you rate that? Got to figure that out in a bit. D rate that got to do all the easy ones lightweight lightweight frame shift drive is increased range and uh, mass managers there we go oh, that is a heavy if we're already getting there and we're not that far below you in in cargo and we haven't even begun looking at this for instance which you're gonna save a lot of stuff on Oh yeah, we should remember to go. Uh oh, oh, that there we go. Remember to go reinforced and high cap. Lots of shield, very nice, like that. Thrusters, let's just go dirty drive, drag drives, on that life support, frame shift drive, power distributor. Can we boost on a four D? Can I make this thing boost if I go with? Engine focus, cluster capacitor. Yes, it will boost. Ooh, can we boost on a... Th That's heavier. Can we go on a 3D? Engine focused, cluster capacitor. Oh, we can. How far can we go? Engine focused. Okay, that was stretching it. The 3D will boost. Engine focused, cluster capacitor, and we're boosting. Here comes the last party trick. 
That is getting this thing to fly on the smallest possible power plant. 3A should do it. We're gonna disable our cargo hatch. And we're gonna 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 go overcharged on it. Oh monster. Yeah, that's easy. That is easy. That's very easy. Two is probably stretching it too far. It's close though. Okay, so 3A overcharged, stripped down for more range. Okay, let's just quickly do the numbers for this one and see what we get here. Because this is going to be a very, very close call compared to the Type 9. So in this case, our cargo comes in at 696. And we're going to multiply that with our laden jump range, which is 37 point. Oh, I see where this is going. 5, 3, giving us... giving us 26,120.88 points, which is more than 21,000. So the cutter, I would say, if you're looking at pure, uh, how much cargo you can transfer um, in the fewest possible jumps, then the cutter is better. So the cutter is better for long range, but if you're going short range travel, you're better off with uh, with the Type 9. So I would say if your trade route is, um, is I would say, less than 100 light years from, I mean, you have less than 100 light years between stations, then I would go with the Type 9. If you're going further than 100, it's just, it's just a guess. I don't know the exact number, but then I would go with a, uh, with a cutter that has, I mean, just because you go from those extra seven light years of jump range is a huge difference. Okay. The Type 9 has five utilities. Oh, yeah, okay. But they engineered. Okay, let's put four heat sinks. Okay, let's make this fair then. Heat sinks, heat sinks, heat sinks. And now we're probably in power problems. No, we're not. We could even turn off the cargo hatch if we wanted to. So that's not an issue. We can still run the four there without any issues which of course is going to affect our jump range so i need to correct that now so now we're 37.47 but we are still above with about five uh, five thousand points Yeah, that's another good point. I mean, if you get a, if you get caught by a pirate, and I mean, we can just barely boost. I mean, we're not going to be able to perma boost. So you have an effective speed of what two hundred and a bit, um, compared to the like three hundred and a bit in the cutter. So this thing can run, <laughs> but then of course it's a lot heavier. So if you're going to get caught, then well, you have an easier time getting away. And we maybe okay. Should we try to make it even more fair and say we want a docking computer? Where does this put us? Just to make a more fair comparison. So this is 688 times the jump range, which now got back up again to 57 there. Yeah, it put us down a little bit on points again, but we're still at, uh, at 25,800 and 48 points. So. Yeah, cutter kind of wins on range, not cargo. As I said, if you're going long range trading, um, yeah, if you go long range trading, you would probably go with a cutter. If you're going to short range, go with a type nine. That seems to be the meta right now. Um, okay, I have an idea. Um, oh yeah, sorry, we have Crovax over on Twitch. I just tuned in. What are we doing? We're building ships today. Uh, meet. Uh, sorry, we have, we have uh, theory crafting ships. 
Um, here is an idea that I also want to explore that might be interesting. Um, and that is, I recall that I heard, oh, oh, not that one, come on, work with me, there we go. Okay, I recall that at some point I heard Frontier say, I can't remember when it was, it was way before the, it was with the very, very early announcements doing, uh, doing this, that they said that they were, they were imagining the new mining to be something where it would be more profitable for miners to go into deep space and mine there. So what we might see is that the, the resources in the bubble is going to get depleted. And maybe the, the rocks with deep cores is going to be so scarce that we're never going to be able to find them. Um, that means that suddenly, how would we build, and it's very close to what we did before, a, an exploration, deep space exploration ship, um, or a deep space miner, basically. How would we, we build a ship that's meant to go like 5,000 light years out to some nebula, minor cargo hold full of something very, very precious, and then come back, which is much cargo as it can. Um, I kind of want to explore that, and I think we have to go with the Anaconda. Because jump range. Exactly, as Scorpio said, it makes sense without with the persistencies and the and the asteroids are getting blown up. We don't know how quickly these refreshes, so we could actually see um, just what happens. So I kind of want to go and try to build a deep space miner. And I think I'm going to build it off the um, off the Anaconda. Um, here's my goal. This, okay, so the build here is obviously going to be um, would you go solo? Well, that, that, I mean, if we're going to deep space, it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, there's no one out there anyway. Um, yeah, Dave, that's right. The persistency didn't last that long, but that was the beta server. I have a suspicion that they might have amped up the numbers. Um, so... Um, so that they would spawn more quickly on the beta server. Or they could have done that to try and prevent... Hold on, I'm just going to get myself back up the other corner. They could have done that so that people would actually have... So they would make sure that the rings right next to Shinrata would constantly be filled with these to make it a lot easier to get your hold of them. Um, so people could actually test it and they didn't have to fly around for hours looking for cores. They're interested in working and testing the mechanic, uh, not the spawn rate right now. Um... I hope that's not the case. I mean, if they'd spawn daily, that would be perfect. Then you could find your own little secluded mining spot and just mine there. But um, it might also be that if a specific ring was mined very heavily, then there would be longer or less chance that these uh, new cores... Anyway, that, there's a, there's, there was something around that, so I want to try and build something along those lines. Um... So I think we're just going to get started, basically. So idea is, uh, I have a goal that is, I want to see, is, would it be possible to have a cargo hold that could hold, I don't know, like 100 million in credits, right? I think that's doable, maybe. If we want to have 100 million in credits, we know that, um, we know that the, the core components, the one you get out of the cores, they are worth around... Um, around 250, a little bit less. So we would probably need in the vicinity of 450 tons of cargo. Now, that would probably mean that I would start with a 7A cargo rack because we're going to need a lot of cargo. We also want a fuel scoop and we don't want that to be too small because we are, after all, going to be fuel scooping quite a bit. Here, we want more cargo. cargo rack actually you know what we should actually fit everything else um here we probably want a detailed surface scanner surface scanner okay it's just called surface scanner now 
Yeah, oh, that could be if there were even more valuable materials. But I'm going to try to aim for a cargo hold here. You can see the cargo hold for around 450. That's kind of where I hope I can get it to. It might be difficult because I can see here, even if I go cargo here, um, it might even not be not even be possible. But we'll see. I mean, we're not even close. Yeah, we can't do the other probe radius on Coriolis. We'll leave that un, uh, unengineered. Um, okay, for refinery... I mean... We don't need 10 bins, but we have a class 4 slot anyway, so why not just use it? Um, we're gonna run into the same issues as before, that we want pretty much the same as the, as the trade anaconda. I would probably say jump range is not as important as it was, so I would, but I would still want some. So probably go with a four here to use those smaller slots to save our class fives. We're not going to be able to get up to 400 tons. Huh. <laughs> I'm just considering if there are any other ships that would be useful for this. We could, uh, but the Type 9, the jump range is not going to be good. It's going to be better, but we might be able to push it up to like 40. Yeah, we need prospectors, I know. Mm. Oh, you know what? I can actually, I ah, ah, this is what I'll do. We'll do uh, limpets, whoops. Limpets, limpets, limpets. Um... We don't need that many collectors. Two are fine when we're doing core hunting because they don't spawn that quickly, the fragments anyway. Um, same here, Prospector. I would probably go with a 1D Prospector to make it light because range doesn't matter. We'll go close. Could we go lighter with this? Yeah, like that. Five, three 3D. Super multi-purpose. You might have to bite the bullet go with a 5A fuel scoop. I am afraid so. Because this is what we need for mining. We'll, of course, need the uh, mining lasers, mining tools. But we don't have those. We're just going to put in something there to remind us. This is going to be interesting. What happens if we take that fuel scoop out and go with a 5A fuel scoop? Fuel scoop 5A. There we go. And then go, can I even go cargo? Yes. Oh, we're not quite there. But we're not going to get any more cargo. We don't have a shield either. I just realized that we're running without a shield. That's no good. We're going to be blowing up asteroids. We need shields, meaning that we'll have to forfeit that, putting us even lower. Ah. Uh, okay. So here we can maybe fit a shield. Like. Five D shields with reinforced and with. High cap, like so, giving us plenty of shields, I think. Yeah, I have to agree that I think the cutter would be a better choice. I'm just going to quickly finish it here. Um, 7D, I'm not going to downgrade the thrusters too much. We need, we, no, we actually need the 8. Oh, how much lighter are they? Oh, they're a lot lighter. Okay, we're going to do with that. Dirty drive, drag drives, because we do need the speed. Uh, to be more efficient when mining. We want the frame shift drive. Just quickly got to finish this. Increase range, mass manager. We want to derate the life support. Uh, and we will lightweight it. And we will also derate the sensors, which will also lightweight. Oh, that was only class two. There we go. Class five. Yeah, the vet, I wouldn't go vet. Uh, the, the jump range of the vet is too short for this to be even remotely funny. Um, 
heavy duty deep plating there. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, what do we need? We need the power distributor. I definitely want to be able to boost and also want to boost at a decent speed, but also want to save some. I also want to save some power. So I'm probably going to go 70. I'll save some, um, some mass here. Engine focused. And we don't need cluster capacitors, so we can go super conduit. Plenty of power, that's good. How's our jump range? Latent jump range around 30. That's okay, we can get that down by going with a 3A power plant, which we are going to... Overcharge, I guess. Which is just enough, and then we can go thermal or strip down. Strip down. Okay. So that gives us about 38 light years of jump range for 350 tons of cargo. That gives about 75 million. Okay, seven eighty-eight million tons of cargo. That's not too bad. 88 million for a single trip, that's not too, that's not half bad, and, I mean, the, the trip out there is still 60 light years jump range. We're gonna be jumping out there real quick. The, the trip home will be slow. Um, I still have a, it's, it's, I know it's a, it's a silly thing, but I still want to try to see if we can't get that uh, that uh, elusive 100 million target here. So we're going to strip that thing down. We're going to fill it up with cargo racks. And already we have a lot more room to play with here. Um, let's see. Where do we go over here? We went service scanner, refinery, collectors, collectors, fuel scoop, and shields. Okay. So first we need... Uh, come on. First we need a surface scanner... Then we need a refinery, and we can't use these for anything, so we will need a collector, 5D collector, gonna get a bit more here. And we're gonna need a prospector, we want a, what, can we go for lower? We're gonna 1D prospector, Olympic control there. I mean, the cutter is not the best ship for the new mining. It's going to be difficult to maneuver because of its poor maneuverability. We will have to do as much as we can to make that thing maneuverable. And <laughs> to, oh, 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 we could have kept the pulse lasers. Keep the pulse lasers in as a uh, placeholder for the mining tools. We still have lots of cargo, but we're going to drop some cargo here. For a shield... Shield, shield, shield. What did we go with over here? We went with 5D shield generators, 6D generators. Here we're going to engineer this. We're going to engineer this for reinforced and high cap, like so. Lovely, lovely shields. And then we're just going to begin engineering this. Lightweight, this. Power distributor, do that later. Lightweight, lightweight. Did I do, do the right here? Yes, I did. Yeah, I mean, uh, the maneuverability, we'll have to probably get the, the 8A thrusters with 30 drives and drag drives on it just to make this thing, like, remotely bearable. You can see our, our jump range is not great, but that's hopefully going to change now. Oh, God. Oh, we, oh wait. Did this one have a... We didn't even put a Guardian FSD booster on this thing. But you know what? We are still aiming for those 450, right? So we could actually go here and then put a Guardian... Guardian FSD booster in. This is going to help us. Then we're going to go Increase Range and Mass Manager. And then we just need the power plant. Could we go strip down? I mean, 10% is 16 tons. 
which is nothing on this ship, apparently. Let's play around with that later. We have so far better... Oh, not, not better yet, do we? No, we need to get to 38. Okay, so can we do anything on here? Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot a fuel scoop too. One, two, three, four, five, six modules. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I forgot the fuel scoop too. Ah, oh, there's no room for my cargo. Fuel scoop, 6A fuel scoop, like so. <laughs> oh, we still over, we still have the cargo. <laughs> we just need that power plant up and running. 5A. Overcharged. Way much. Way, way overcharged. Um, oh, this is close. Hmm, what do we do now? I can't turn off my cargo hatch. Yeah, okay, so without without spending too much time trying to resolve our power issue right now. Um, yeah, that's right, but it kind of, if we want to make it fair, these are usually the same, so that's, it, it, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I could turn off the FSD booster, of course. And then, yes, and then go mining mode. So when I'm traveling, I'll just turn off, like, uh, my cargo hatch and my refinery. And then we are in travel mode. And then I'll turn this, uh, this, yeah. And then I would turn the FSD booster off, turn these two on, and we are flying. Um... So one problem I have with this, I mean, our latent jump range is about the same. I mean, we are one light year short of where we were, but 60 lights, almost 61 light years going outwards, where here we only have 45. That's going to hurt. That means that the trip out there is going to be long. It's going to take a long time. So I would actually, because the Anaconda has better maneuverability, it's easier to fly around and, uh, and get the rocks ready to blow. Yeah, type 9. Uh, maybe that would be the, a better choice. Do we really have to look at the type 9 too? Okay, let's have a look at the type 9. I don't want to type heavy, type 10. No, probably not. Okay, and again, we gotta fit the same placeholder weapons here. I'm just gonna begin fitting this thing up. So we need a surface scanner. We need a fight the collector. The one D prospector. We need a refinery. Still lots of cargo. Yeah, gonna look at the Python too because that could be very, very. I think we're gonna be pretty low on cargo. I think we're gonna be looking at something like a hundred tons in the Python. Um, that's my my guess at least. Like 96 tons. I think 96 is what we're going to be able to bring back in a Python. 
Um, what else did I miss? Did I bring shields? No, I haven't brought shields yet. No, I need shields and I need a fuel scoop. So, shields. No, no, no. Shields. Okay, so we can't fit a class 4 shield. Oh, this is going to be interesting. We'll have to fit a fuel scoop here then. 4A fuel scoop. Ouch, that, that's going to hurt. I'm getting my 5 fuel scoop here. 4A fuel scoop. Um, we might upgrade that to a class 6 later. Just because, oh my god, a class 5 fuel or 4 fuel scoop's going to hurt. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna do that. That that's gonna be too painful. Too painful. I can I can sacrifice that for for better fuel scoop. Six A fuel scoop. Ah, much better. How far we think we have to go? I was thinking like a thousand, two, three, four, five thousand, something like that. That's at least the kind of range I had in mind when I talk deep space. So that's why I'm so piggy with my jump range. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, all those seven modules are fitted. Oh, six modules, right? Prospector refinery. Collector detail service scanners. Shields, which we're going to get reinforced, high capped. A fuel scoop. I mean, a fuel scoop. Shielded, okay. Um, no, they haven't. Well, they hinted it, but they never actually confirmed it. So, well, yeah. Already we're doing better for cargo than we were before. This is a lot of cargo, though. And... Um, same as before, we will have to go with the 7 8 thrusters. Because we need that maneuverability, dirty drive, drag drives here. Give us a long range frame shift drive. Oh, wow. Our 6E power plant can't even handle this now. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, increase range. Yes. And mass management. And light support is downgraded. And light weighted. And so is our sensors. Oh, small sensors on this ship. Light weighted. Heavy duty deep plating. Oh yeah. FSD boosters, that's right. I forgot that one. We're kind of the same problem as we are with the Anaconda here that our maximum jump range is not gonna be wonderful. Even that is going to hurt. This, oh, that's painful. Six D power plant overcharged. Oh, hold on. Can we go... A, can we go 5D and overcharge it and still work this? Overcharged. Yeah, we can. Strip down. Huh. Yeah, it might be. This John says maybe there's going to be even more valuable material out there. That's going to be worth our while, worth our while to go out there and get. Um, that is painful. That is really painful to look at. This is not going to work. I mean, forty-one. I mean, this was bad at forty-five. This is not going to go anywhere near. So far, I'm a little torn. I mean, that is just a pretty number. I mean, 61 light years going out. I guess, I mean, about the same jump range going back. Uh, but again, so much more cargo in the cutter. 
you know what? Let's have a... People requested that we took a look at um, at a Python for kind of the same kind of kind of uh, deal. I also want to look at the Asp Explorer, but let's look at the Python here. Um, it's going to fit... Oh, they were small before, so we need to be small here as well. There we go. I'm going to fit this up for cargo. Oh, this is going to be very, very, very interesting, though. Um, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, clear this. Cargo. There we go. Yeah, double the profit with exploring. Um, okay, we will need a... Okay, you know what? I'm going to try to do something here. We might do that on all the ships. What would happen if we drop the detailed surface scanner and instead of going into the hot spots, we just drop into the ring in a random spot. We'll still be able to fight the cause, so that shouldn't be an issue. Because that means that we can use... Look at this. We can use a 2A refinery. Six bins is more than enough because, remember, we're only going for these core materials. And so far, I have heard there's like four or five of them in total. So six bins should be more than enough. Collect a limpid controller. Oh, not A-rated. D-rated. One D prospect Olympic controller. Shield and fuel. So can we fit a shield here? We can. Three D shields. Uh, uh, high cap. You know what? We're going to be able to... This is actually not too bad. Guardian FSD booster. Five A fuel scoop. Six A thrusters. Five A there. Derate that one. Do that in a bit. Engineer this with lightweight. Engineer this with lightweight. Frameshift drive is increased range mass manager. Look at that. Where's the anaconda at? 38. We're getting close to the anaconda levels here. Max jumper is still not wonderful, but okay. That's because we can derate the, 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 on the anaconda. We can probably do the same here, to be honest. Derate that then, because it's maneuverable enough. Drag drives. And a 3A power plant with overcharged on it. And stripped down. Gives us more power than we need. And then the power distributor. We just need to be able to boost. So what a 4D engine focused. Yeah. Strip down. Look at that, though. I'll be damned. Look at that. Wow. I am actually impressed. I mean, oh, sorry, but the cargo hold here is almost 200 tons. Wow. I mean, just look at this. If we compare this to the cutter now, right? Uh, no, sorry, yeah. Okay, compared to the Anaconda, that's actually the best comparison right now. Um, 
I mean, sure, we have about 150 more tons of cargo, but our late jump range, 38 here, and almost 42 here, and we should be trinket with this a little bit more, we could get that up to 42. I would promise you we can get that to 42 if we wanted to. I mean, if we just quickly begin to, like, lightweight some of the things here, and uh, what else could we do? We could play around with it. We're really close already. Um, we might be able to go... Could we go... Could we lower this, maybe? Overcharged. Monstrous. Is that enough? That's damn close. If we turn off the cargo hatch, then we're even closer. And where we are in jump range now... Oh, we're close. Um, where do we save some power here? We save a little bit of power by, instead of going high... Reinforced, which increases distributor draw. That doesn't matter. High cap increases power draw. So instead of that, we are going to go with... Strip down, I think. Getting us even closer and even closer here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some mining modules here, but there's also some power... I mean, these also use more power than, than those. So, so, but again, you would be able to get that up to a late jump range of, four, of 42 light years. What size cargo? As much as possible. Uh, my original plan was to go for like 400. But I mean, this will still bring in, what, 48, th uh, 48 million on a single trip. And this will be significantly faster going back. And we're still going to be pretty damn fast when we are going out. You know what? Pi this is actually my favorite deep space build so far. Um, what can the Crate Phantom do? Nothing. What can the normal Crate do? That also has less, so that's going to be less cargo. What about the Asp Exploder? Yeah, no, that's not going to work either. Um, okay, so uh, John asks how far we're going for mining. This is um, this is just in case that deep space mining is going to be a thing. I'm definitely going to try it. I'm not sure if, it, if deep space mining will be a thing. Um, I agree that pythons and mining seems to be uh, like uh, working very, very well together. Um... Damn, I'm liking this ship. Can I try Beluga? Yeah, we can try the Beluga. That's Beluga, Beluga liner. Gotta make this... Uh... Pop, pop. Oh, hold on. These should actually be small. Game bolts to make this fair. Pop, 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 pop. Get rid of all that. Fit this up with cargo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The new cargo restrictions removed. Okay. So already, I mean, this if this is going to be a competitor, it will try to, to go down to the Python levels before. I mean, this is already have less than we had in the in the Anaconda. But jump ranges, base jump ranges are not bad. Let's start by the uh, by the core internals. Get that thing running. Power distributor. Let's do that later. Light weight. This this there and this is bigger and this is. Increase range, and this is mass manager, and the thrusters. Uh, we want some maneuverability. Should we do D-rated, just because, and then dirty drive, drag drives, and then the power plant will do it a bit. Already, I mean, that, that's decent. And we can just, you know, go like that. So we're not going to go up to the, like, or maybe we actually are, because we're going to add a, uh, oh yeah, okay. Okay, same mentality here. We don't want the, the detail. I don't think the detail service scan is going to be a must. I don't think the hotspots is as good as we uh, as we think they are. So, 3A refinery giving us 8 bins. We want a 3A, no, 3D collect Olympic controller. We want a... 1D Prospect Olympic Controller. Uh, what else do we want? Shields. Oh, yeah. Sh shields, fuel, shield, fuel scoop, and booster. Yeah. 
Um, can we go with a three class three shields on a python? Will that fly? Is fairly fairly light ship. No, it won't. So that probably means that so we don't want to have a small fuel scoop either. We'll have to fit the frame shift booster here. I think. I know. Let's keep that empty for now. Uh, okay, how it must be able to fit a class five shield. That oops, that must be able to keep this thing flying. Yeah, five D. There we go. Reinforced, stripped down. We're gonna go try to get as much of this as we can. And uh, ooh, that's forty upgrade that. And then we probably want a five D fuel scoop, or a five A fuel scoop. So now the question is, do we want to sacrifice Yeah. Do we want to sacrifice a class 3, 4 or 6 slot? Ah, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put the fuel We're going to put the fuel scoop here, 6 class 6 fuel scoop. This class 5 is then going to be our guardian booster. Guardian, Frameshift Drive, Booster, and these are going to be cargo racks. Wow! This is not too bad. This is actually pretty good. Look, compared to the Python, we have almost the same cargo. We have slightly more cargo here. We have 24 tons of cargo. Because the condor is not as good as the python when it comes to deep space. Um, a deep, deep space mining, I must add. Because the condor is going to have a very, very... Um, yeah, the condor could work too, but just... Uh, I don't know. But look at this latent jump rate of going home. That's very, very impressive. Carrying 200 tons and still being able to fly almost 46. Ooh, that's pretty good. And then almost 60 here. Oh, sorry. 52, sorry. We'll be going out. Yeah, so it's a little bit slower going out, but it's faster going home. Um, oh, but we need to, of course, do something with our power plant and our power distributor. Which we haven't done yet. Um, could we go with a 4A overcharged? Wow, okay. Can we go with a 3A three, three overcharged? Oh, we're close. We're very close. We're probably going to get that at the power distributor then. 3D power distributor. Engine focused and super cutwood. Oh, thought that worked. Cluster capacitor. Nope. Oh, and the A rates are lighter. So 3A engine focus. Still not enough. What if we go cluster capacitor? Nope. Mass is 10 tons here. Four tons in the D-rated. Think we might be able to make this one fly. Oh, rod charge enhanced, engine enhanced. Did I did I choose the wrong one before as well? Engine enhanced. I did. Oh my god. Two tons. Two point five tons. Okay. Uh, we'll go 3D engine enhanced. Oh, here we go. 2D engine enhanced. 1D engine, engine enhanced. And cluster capacitor. Ooh, it will boost. Oh, but okay. That's going to be very, very slow boosting. I probably would, would consider upgrading this a little bit. 
just so we can boost a little bit more often. Yeah, with every one high charge, maybe. We're going to go engine focused. What about super conduit? I would. Hold on. Could a 2D with just engine focused actually make us boost? No. So that's okay. So I'll go with a 5D. No. 3D, there we go, engine focused and a super conduit. So get us faster recharge. But this is the same deal as before, right? right? We're going to turn off the fuel scoop, uh, not fuel scoops, um, cargo hatch when we're traveling. And then we're going to turn off the FSD booster and then on the cargo hatch when we are mining. So so that's, that's just fine. That'll, that'll work. Now we're actually getting somewhere. A look at how far this thing will go on a single tank of fuel. That's actually a little bit overkill. I mean, if you wanted to. We could downgrade that a lot. I mean, on this one, you would only be able to do something like three jumps and you would uh, not even three jump, two jumps, you would run out. So this is probably a little bit too lit, little fuel for me. But with a with a 6C fuel tank, we are going to, on our way home, going to be able to do five jumps, almost 200 light years, uh, 250 light years, actually, um, on a single tank of fuel. I mean, we could go with a, keep the seven. And then go 500, but 500 light years on one tank of fuel is a little bit excessive, I think. Um, so I would probably downgrade that just to get that little bit more jump range out of this ship. It's hot as hell. Yeah. It's probably okay. You know what I'm actually liking? I'm actually liking this. I mean... 55 here, 56, so this is pretty much the same. But the fact that we're gonna, on the way home, gonna get, a, I mean, another eight light years, that is a lot. I mean, we have a rest heat of under 30, it's okay. We can't see it from my, my webcam right now. <laughs> yeah, the beluga is the method for deep space mining, not um, not mining in the bubble, I should say. Because then jump range is a lot less important. But overall, you know, I'm liking this build. I'm actually really liking this. I mean, this will be able to bring what people said, 5, 50, 58, 54 million. Um, just have to find that. 54 million with us back. And... To be honest, that's not too bad. What did we do in the special here? Strip down, good. That's that's not too bad at all. Definitely worth a look to go deep space mining. I might have to build myself this ship and take it out just to see or maybe i'll just fly the refit the python i have a mining python built already so maybe i'll just refit that for deep space mining just to go out and see if there's anything fun and if it actually turns out that it is that is something fun to do out there and that uh, deep space mining makes sense um 
then we could go over and build an actual Beluga liner build because it seems to be a little bit better. Better jump range, way better jump range and more cargo. So, um, interesting. I'll post this link for you guys as well in, uh, in case anyone is interested. Yeah, okay. Fun little build. But anyway, I think that, um, that I'm going to call it for, uh, for today. And uh, yeah, again, of course, this patch is out on the 11th of December, um, which is in exactly a week. So you can be pretty sure that I'll be streaming from the new patch um, next Tuesday. Exactly what I'll be doing, I don't know. But um, I have a sneaky suspicion that it is going to include a mining, uh, some mining tools. Um, maybe we're gonna have a new, have a play around with the new squadrons. I haven't paid much attention to those, so that could be fun to go and have a look at those as well. Um, okay, fair enough. Computer bro. Uh, Anyway, so um, I'm going to call it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'm really uh, happy for those of you guys who sent in uh, some uh, ship suggestions. Um, and it was definitely interesting to have a look at those deep space mining builds. If that's going to be, I don't know if that's going to be a thing. It might be, it might not. Uh, I'll have to figure that out once this whole thing goes live. But anyway, thanks a lot for, uh, for watching. And, uh, and thanks for the, uh, the donations during the live stream. It was absolutely awesome. Um, if you want, I'll be hanging out over on Discord. There's a link in the description. Um, so you can come over, you can say hi. And if you have some points that you feel like I missed during the live stream, you're more than welcome to, um, to come over and say, uh, and say hello. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.